inside of that sub in that dark confine, the answer seemed pretty obvious to him that there was no hope. To the rescuers on the outside of that ship, however, the question signaled a very different thing that there was, after all, hope. There were survivors still alive on the inside of that ship and rescue was still possible. Now, I'm not going to tell you the rest of the story, glory to God, because that's where I want to stop it, right there to let you know that hope is still possible. How many of you know that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus brought hope into a hopeless situation? Amen. Humanity was lost. Sin had destroyed everything that was good and corrupted everything that was in it. Such a humanity was lost with its, sing, with its single burning question. Is there any hope for us? Then on that very first Christmas morning, hope was born, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and laid in a manger. Praise God. I want to tell you today, Lord God, as we read in our text today, amen, he shall save his people from their sins, and he is Emmanuel God with us. I'm going to preach today on two hopes. First of all, I'm going to preach on the hope of the world. Praise God. Thank God for the hope of the world. Thank God for Emmanuel, God with us. Isaiah 7, 14 said, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. You see, in the midst of prophesying to a nation who was struggling for survival, the prophet Isaiah look, made a declaration under the anointing of the Holy Spirit that looked ahead to a greater deliverance and a greater hope. Emmanuel, God with us, he was coming. I'm telling you, there is still hope. God is still with us. Can somebody give the Lord some praise that Emmanuel is still here? You see, God will be with us. He walks among us. 1 Timothy 3, 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. And that is exactly what happened on that glorious Christmas morning. He is coming, brought more than and hope. It brought everything that man had ever longed for. Glory to God. I want to tell you, you'll never find the answer in this world. You'll never find the answer at the end of a needle. You'll never find the answer in the pit of an appeal. You'll never find the answer. Glory to God, stick in your mouth on the end of a bottle. But you'll always find what you need in Jesus Christ, our King. Glory to God. Everything that humanity longed for could be found in him, Lord God. He brought life. He brought joy. He brought peace. He brought healing. He brought deliverance and salvation for sin, Lord God. For the first time ever, there was a spark of hope in the dark confines of this sin-stricken world. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. I want to tell you folks, Lord God, the miracle of Christmas is the miracle of the incarnation. God stepped out of glory and become man. Man, amen, so he could save us from our sins, glory to God. You see, this is the miracle, amen, that's contained in the simple but powerful statement, God with us. You see, this is what Jesus is. He is God manifest in the flesh. He is the infinite God. Amen. In a finite setting. Amen. The never ending, never exhausting, never quitting love of God in a person. He is the hope of all 
the world. And this morning, I want you to consider, Lord God, the incarnation. Consider the miracle that unfolded, amen, so that you and I could be saved. When I think about the Lord, I get excited that I'm not who I used to be, praise God, but I'm going to a place that's prepared for me, oh my God. You see, it should stir us. Amen. It should stir worship in every one of our hearts. Uh, thankfulness uh, should leap in our chest uh, that God loved us enough, uh, that he loved each, and, uh, each one of us enough to become a man and die for our sins. Sounds more like an Easter message than a Christmas message, Pastor. Glory to God, Easter's part of Christmas too. Come on now. Psalms 8 Amen, three through six. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels uh, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Uh, thou hast put all things uh, under his feet. I'm telling you, the psalmist asked, uh, what is man that God uh, is mindful of him? Uh, how is it uh, that we even matter at all uh, in the grand scheme uh, of things uh, to an infinite God? God, he who governs the universe, who holds the worlds together by the power of his word alone. Who are you and I, amen, that God should visit us and that his glory and his majesty should be upon us? Who are we that we should receive his mercy and his grace? Yet the true miracle of Christmas is that he came, God became man, he left his throne in glory, wrapped himself in human flesh, humbled himself, and become a servant for you and I. See, now that don't move people anymore. But think about that for a minute. The ancient of days, the one who was and is and forever will be became a man became flesh and blood he lived and breathed and walked among us even the wind and the waves recognized his authority storms obeyed his command Demons bowed at his feet. Sickness had to flee. Death was no match for him. Blind eyes were open. The lame leapt for joy. The mute shouted his praise. And demons begged for mercy. This is the miracle of Christmas that God is with us. Praise God. He brought liberty from sin's bondage. Freedom from Satan's snares, healing for the broken, peace for the disturbed, and hope for the hopeless. This is what we celebrate at Christmas time. We celebrate the one who was the unique manifestation of God with us. We celebrate Jesus, that name that is above every name, that name that is the only name under heaven given among men that has the power to save us. Oh, let me describe to you the wonder of the incarnation that God would become a man. Amen. And the creator would enter his creation that the Lord of all heavens would make himself a little lower than the angels and that he would walk on this earth bring peace, comfort, deliverance and healing. He was a healer. He came but came to do more more than heal. He was a peace speaker, but his mission was much broader than peace alone. He showed love, mercy, and compassion, but he came for a greater purpose. He came to die for our sins. Somebody give the Lord praise. Yeah. 
The true miracle of the incarnation is that he took our place. He carried our cross up that old rugged street to an old rugged hill called Golgotha with legions of angels at his command, with all of heaven yearning to intervene to humble himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. And this is why, folks, today, he needs to be so highly exalted among his church. This is why his name is to be the name above every name. No one else ever did what he did for you and I. Because he did exactly what that angel said he would do. He saved his people from their sins. My Lord, you missed a good place to shout right there. I'm telling you, thank God. Hallelujah. My past sins are not held against me anymore. I don't care how many times. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't care. Listen, I don't care how many times the devil brings up who you used to be. I don't care how many times the devil brings up what you used to do. Come on now. You just need to look at him and say, my God has forgiven me. Yeah, it's under the blood. Hey, it's in the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered no more. The Lord said he throw, tossed them over his shoulder. And guess what? God's not looking back. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Listen to me. Oh, hallelujah. His death purchased our life. His sacrifice paid the price for eternal freedom. He who knew no sin became sin so that we who had no hope could find hope. Amen. Of all the ages, his death on the cross was the greatest triumph ever won. And when they laid the stripes on his back, they unwittingly opened the door for our healing. Oh, hallelujah, both emotional healing and physical healing. For by his stripes we are. Ooh, man, that sounds so good. Oh, come on now. My Lord, wouldn't that be an awesome Christmas present? That by his stripes we are. Ooh, oh, Lord. Wouldn't you like to walk into Christmas being healed? Lord God, wouldn't you like to walk into Christmas with your family being healed? Wouldn't you like to walk into Christmas with your body being healed? Wouldn't you like to walk into Christmas with your mind being healed, your emotions being healed? Wouldn't you like to walk into Christmas with your finances being healed? My Lord, by his stripes we are. Ooh, look at your neighbor and tell him one more time. By his stripes we are. Why? Because he's the hope of the world. Oh, hallelujah. You see? They drove the nails into his hands and feet. They unwittingly shed that innocent, blameless blood. Amen. The precious blood of heaven's only spotless lamb. And that blood has the power to wash away my sins. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Or what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood. Hallelujah. That blood has the power to make you whole. Lord, thank God for the blood. Somebody shout this Christmas for the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Hallelujah. All the hurt and wrong in the world can be covered by the blood. All the pain and sorrow, amen, can find peace under the blood. All heartache and bondage uh, that has signified sin's reign, all of it can be broken by the power of the blood. Because of the cross, sorrows give way to laughter. Weeping gives way to joy. Pain is swallowed up by healing. And despair is overcome by hope. <laughs> May we never, 
lose the thrill and the awe that springs into our heart when we encounter the incarnation God with us. May it always be a river bubbling up inside of us uh, that moves us to, come on now, somebody may not understand your praise. Uh, somebody may not understand why you're getting happy. Somebody may not understand why you dance the way you dance. Uh, shout the way you shout. Run the way you run. Uh, amen. Do what you do. Uh, Lord of God, they, they might not understand it, but listen to me. Uh, Lord God, I can't help myself because when I think about the Lord, uh, I just got to get happy. When I think about how he lifted me up, how he saved my soul, how he filled my life uh, with the Holy Ghost, uh, how he's healed my body, how he's touched my family. When I think about all these things, I can't help but get happy. Amen. It comes out of me with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Praise God. Woo! Well, bless God. May we never Lose the wonder of the gift that was given to the whole world on that first Christmas morning. May we never take for granted the high price that was paid so that you and I could go free. But not only do we find that the miracle of Christmas is the hope of the world, but I think I like this one the best. Lord of God, the miracle of Christmas was the hope of glory. What are you talking about? You see, along with the miracle of Christmas, God with us, we have God in us. And you miss another opportunity to shout right there. I'm glad he's with us, but I'm glad he's in me. Come on, come on. I'm glad he's in me. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, that's the reason why he came. Colossians 1, 25 through 27, Paul says, Whereof I made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from the from age and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'm glad I don't just have hope in this world only. Glad I got something more to look forward to than what's down here. Woo! He's not only the hope of the world, but he's the hope of glory. Oh, come on, somebody. Glory to God. You, uh, you see, uh, glory to God, I'm less than perfect. And every one of us are. You'll say, I have my share of faults and my flaws. Uh, amen. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, I come from an unclean people. I have unclean hands uh, and an unclean heart. My righteousness is a filthy rags. Uh, there is nothing good in me. There is nothing holy in me. Uh, there is nothing pure and undefiled about me. Uh, but Jesus Christ uh, is inside of me. And where I've come short. Short, he makes up the difference. Praise God. My God, somebody give the Lord some praise that you're saved and on your way to glory this morning. Hallelujah. You see, the miracle of Christmas is bigger than just God with us. Thank God he's with us. It's bigger than just a child wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. The miracle of Christmas is God in us. It is the hope of glory residing in the human life that when I lay down and I take my last breath, my last breath here is going to be my first breath in glory. Whew. Going from glory to glory. Come on now. You see, it's a wonder of the ages, uh, the Prince of Peace, the King of Glory, the Lord of Lords, uh, God Almighty investing His Spirit into the hearts of men and women just like me and you. Jesus lives and breathes inside of you and me. 
Somebody shout yes. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What I want on this Christmas Sunday, on this Sunday morning, glory to God, is for you and I to realize who and what we are. Second Corinthians, Paul said, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 21, Therefore, say it with me, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, you ain't who you used to be. If you are, you ain't saved. If you're you who you used to be, you don't know Christ. Because if any man's in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who have reconciled us. Come on, look at somebody and say, you've been reconciled to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors. My Lord, look at your neighbor and say, you're an ambassador of Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ. Said, be ye reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You know what I'm looking at in here today? I'm looking at saints, not sinners. I get so sick of hearing folks say, oh, I'm still just a sinner saved by grace. No, you ain't. That's who I used to be. I ain't a sinner no more. I'm sorry. I'm a saint of God. His blood's been applied to my life. And you know what that did? That took away the guilty stain. Hallelujah. I knew I'd come off that pulpit sometime. Glory to God. And this is the moment. Listen, you are not the sinner. Don't you sit there and say, I'm just a sinner saved by. Lord, if you're still a sinner, then here again, let me tell you, you don't know Christ. But you see, a saint gets excited about his Lord. Because a saint gets excited about what Jesus has done for him. Amen. He saved me. He sanctified me. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. He's healed my body, my Lord. He put a new song in my life. He pulled me up out of that fiery clay, set my feet on a solid rock to stay and establish. Mm-mm. Woo! Well, glory. See, you got to remember who you are. There's come, come on, there come some days when the devil's going to try to make you forget who you are. To try to tell you who you used to be. You are not that. Look at your neighbor, look them in the eyeball. Point your finger in their eye, put your finger in their eyeball if you got to. And say, listen, you are not who you used to be. You got the hope of glory running through you. Not only do we walk in the hope of the world, but we got the hope of glory in Christmas. Hallelujah. You see, our lives are the expression of his wonder and majesty. Our words testify of his greatness and power and that he makes himself known to a lost and dying world in the things that we do and say. The answer to the world's greatest problem are found in the church. Is there hope? 
Yes, there is hope. Hallelujah. Christ with us and Christ in us. Hallelujah. You see, the glory and majesty of heaven was revealed to the world at the incarnation. How much more should the world recognize the ever-present hope of glory that resides in my life and in yours? You see, it's our calling. It's our purpose. And it's the reason why we exist. To demonstrate the glory of God to a lost and dying world. We're his body, we're his church, and Christ lives inside of us. In closing, is there any hope? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Look at your neighbor one more time before you stand and say, there is hope. There is hope. morning, as the world gets ready to celebrate Christmas here in a few weeks, in a season that is marked by smiling faces and cheery places, I can assure you that beneath the tinsel and the light, hidden behind the smiles and the laughter, there's a whole lot of hurt going on in people's lives. You see, we put on a good face. 